This is the last section in chapter 5, which is to do with forces and friction. And this section is actually on friction. Remember year 12, where we did friction. Uh, so in year 12, friction was constant. It was given as a fixed value. So for example, you've got a car. Here's a fantastic drawn a car here. BMW. And let's say the car's moving this way, like this. There's some sort of pulling force. Let's say the en engine um, has a pulling force of 1,500 newtons and there's a constant resistive force of 600 newtons. Okay, so that's your resistive force there. And it was fixed. Yeah, it didn't change. In real reality, however, uh, friction is proportional to the normal reaction, R. Okay, and also uh, different surfaces. Different surfaces uh, have different uh, rough or smoothness. Yeah, you don't just get perfectly smooth surfaces or, or things which are completely rough. We get things which are in between. And actually, we can describe the smoothness and the roughness of a uh, surface by something called um, the coefficient of friction and we use the group letter mu mu to represent that so this uh, coefficient of friction this number can go from uh, 0 to 1 and take any value in between so as you move towards uh, 0 and you move towards this end things are getting smoother and as you move to this end here they're getting rougher and we get uh, values in between so if it was 0 the coefficient of friction is perfectly smooth there's no friction at all if the coefficient was was one well it's, it's not going to move at all because it's like complete friction um, so that's what the value of a surface can take and um, let's say I've got some sort of surface or object on a surface um, and I know the normal reaction of it And I've got mg down there. So and let's say that it's moving in this direction. If it's moving in that direction or accelerating that way, the friction is going to push that way. If there's a pushing force going this way. But you'll know if anything is on a, a, a rough surface and you push it along, it, it may not move straight away. So if you had a book and it was on a carpeted floor and you push it just a tiny bit, it's not going to move. You have to apply a certain amount of force before it starts moving. And it will start moving when this pushing force overcomes the, the friction um, that the carpet offers. And the, the maximum amount of friction that the, the carpet or whatever uh, rough surface can sort of give to stop things from moving is called F max, the maximum frictional force. And that's equal to mu, this coefficient of friction, times the normal reaction. Now, if your pushing force um, equals or exceeds f max it will start moving so if 
um, the pushing force if the pushing force let's spell it right exceeds f max then what will happen is the object will start accelerating okay if this pushing force um, doesn't exceed f max then it won't move but what's really important let's say f max let's do this up here let's say that f max was a hundred newtons right what does that mean that means you need to offer a hundred newtons of um, pushing force before it moves right so if i had a pushing force let's just call it p of 100 newtons so it's exactly the same as f max okay the object would just start moving it will be on the point of moving if my pushing force was 150 newtons it's going to start moving but that leaves 50 newtons of force left over to cause it to accelerate so this will accelerate if however my pushing force was only 70 newtons it's not enough force to cause the object to move but f max or f the frictional force will only be 70. it can go up to 100 but it will only ever match whatever pushing force is pushed against it until it gets to its maximum it's still there but then the pushing force will overcome it so if you don't put, give enough force for something to move then the resistive force you're going to get back is exactly the same as what you've given it so a pushing force of 70 will only give a frictional force of 70 back you're not going to get 100 newtons of frictional force back from from 70 pushing it doesn't make sense i mean the thing, thing will be flying towards you it doesn't make any sense okay now in pretty much all of the questions you do you're going to be working out what f max is and f max is mu r you're looking at the maximum frictional force because things are either um, on the point of moving or they may be in equilibrium in which case the pushing force equals uh, f max or something is accelerating and if something is accelerating then the pushing force exceeds f max yeah you may get a question where um, they say is this thing going to move or not and you just need to compare the pushing force to f max and if the pushing force is less less than f max it's not going to move Right, okay, so part A, let's draw a diagram. 5 kg normal reaction, 5g down here. Let's make this the direction of motion to the right. Um, horizontal force of uh, 20 newtons. Pulling this way, a frictional force um of mu r okay the magnitude of the frictional force this means working at f max so that's going to be mu times r now mu is 2 0 0.2 so you've got 0 0.2 times uh, r the normal reaction now if i actually look at the forces going horizontally uh, sorry vertically i have r equals mg they're the only forces going in that, that direction so f max equals 0 0.2 times 5g so f max is just g or you could just say 9.8 newtons part b 
the acceleration of the particle, well, since it's moving that way and it's accelerating, the 20 minus mu r is the resultant force that equals ma. Right, the 20 minus mu r, which we've worked out as 9.8, that's the maximum frictional force, divided by the mass, which is 5, gives me the acceleration. So 20 minus 9.8, uh, divide that by 5, 51 over 25, which is 2.04 uh, newtons. So I'll just write that now, not newtons, meters per second squared. So A equals 2.04 four meters per second squared so there we go now just to highlight something if this pushing force of 20 if that pushing force was only 9.8 newtons this object this particle would just be on the point of moving yet yeah, just on the point where it's about to move it wouldn't actually be moving yet it's just on the verge of it if this pushing force was less than 9.8. Let's say, for example, let's pretend that pushing force was only 5 Newtons. Right, if that push pulling force, sorry, was only 5 Newtons, then the resistive force would only be 5 Newtons. It can go up to 9.8, but it can only match the pulling or pushing force up to its maximum and then after that, the pushing force takes over. Okay. Right, let's have a look here. So again, we'll do a diagram and probably we'll use the diagram for all three parts. We've got a rough surface, five kg again. So we've got five G down there. We've got a normal reaction. Um, the coefficient of friction is 0.4. A horizontal force is applied to the block. So let's do the force pointing that way, pushing it that way. Um, and that force is P. And P can either be 10, 19.6 or 30. So that means we've got a frictional force there of mu R. Right, find the magnitude of the frictional force acting on the block and the acceleration of the block when P is, we've got different values for P. So straight away, R equals 5G. When we look at the forces going that way. So we can leave it like that if we want to. Um, if the coefficient of friction is 0 0.4, that means that mu R is 0 0.4 times 5g and 0.4 times by 5 is 2 so we've got 2g from mu r so that's the maximum the friction can be 2 times 9.8 19.6 newtons okay that's the most it can be 19.6 newtons right it will need at least 19.6 newtons of pushing force to make it move. Now in part A, you've only got 10 newtons of pushing force. Right, does that mean that the frictional force is 19.6? No, it can't be greater than the pushing force. The uh, frictional force, let's call it FR, is only 10. It can't be greater. Than the pushing force it will match it okay so it's only 10 right um in b can you see the pushing force is 19.6 newtons exactly the same as the frictional force so the frictional force has reached its maximum at 19.6 this object is on the point of moving so in part a not moving in part b we could say it's in equilibrium 
it's on the point of moving. It's another way of saying it. The point of moving. And then part C, the pushing force is now greater than the maximum frictional force. So we can now use resultant force equals MA, which means that A is equal to the resultant force divided by the mass. And that will give us 30 minus 19.6 divided by 5, 52 over 25, which is 2.08 meters per second squared. 2.08 meters per second squared. So it's only actually in part C where this thing is, whoops, where this thing is beginning to accelerate only in part C. In parts A and B, it's not moving because the pushing force needs to exceed the maximum frictional force. Right, so we will start with a diagram like this. 30 degrees, we have a mass of 2 kg on a slope. So this is R, it's sliding down the slope with an acceleration of one meter per second squared. We need to put on the mass, sorry, the weight, to times g then we need to find the parallel and perpendicular bits to that so that's 30 which means that um, over here we have 2g cos 30 and here 2g sine 30 like that um, since it's sliding down the slope, resistance is going to be opposing its motion. So friction is going to be going, pointing up. It doesn't really matter too much where you draw your arrow. If you draw it there or draw it on this side up here, um, as long as it's pointing in the, in the right direction. Um, and that is a mu r. Mu R and we need to find mu. Right, so let's start by looking at the forces in these directions going like that. Now they're going to be balanced because it's it's not moving in that direction. So we have R is going to equal two G cos 30, they're the only forces in that direction. It's not accelerating or moving in that direction. Um, so it's balancing. So 2g cos 30, do we get a nice number? Um, 49 root 3 over 5. Um, actually, cos 30, root 3. Um, over 2 times by 2. So let's call that root 3g. I'll leave it like that. Now let's look at the forces going this way. They're not going to be balanced because it's sliding down the slope. Um, and that means that the 2g sine 30 minus mu r is the resultant force and that will equal ma and that's uh, one right so 2g sine 30 can we tidy that up sine 30 is a half so two times a half that will just leave me with g g minus mu r equals two right notice how i'm leaving things in terms of g you know we, it's nice and you know we don't want to write decimals and thirds all over the place unless we have to now r is root 3g 
So g minus mu times by root 3g. So remember that I got um, my value of r I got up here. So I'm just substituting that in. Uh, equals 2. So let's now work out what mu is. So negative mu times root 3g equals 2 minus g. So mu is going to equal 2 minus g divided by negative root 3 times by g. See what we get. So now I'll put in the exact value for g. So 2 minus 9.8 divided by negative root 3 times by 9.8 and I get 0.45952 so let's call that 0 0.4 0 0.4 it's going to be 0 0.460 three significant figures so 0 0.460 for our value of mu okay it doesn't have any units Right, now do exercise 5C on pages 103 to 104.